Hey, what's up? Rock and Roll James on the Rock and Roll James show here on YouTube. And right now I've got Eric Hernandez from Brownsville. I've known Eric for quite a while. I've known his brother a little bit longer. His uh, brother is Aaron, and he's with the band called Pantheon, a death metal band from Brownsville, who just recently released a new CD that you can check out. What's the name of the CD, man? Death and Darkness. Death it's and called Darkness. Death and Darkness. Uh, is it available on Spotify and stuff? I I'm not 100%, not but 100%. we definitely do have uh, copies available at all the Pantheon shows. Yeah, the CD and God cover, knows, man. God knows they play a lot of shows. Yeah, the CD <laughs> cover is amazing, man, and the music's always on. Awesome. Those guys have really stayed true to their roots, man. You know what I mean? They've been doing it for how long? Uh, 1991. Uh, Aron's, the, <laughs> Damn. Aron's the founding member, 1991, the drummer. He's been he's been doing it for that long, man. Yeah. He, he's still the original member uh, alongside with Beto. And uh, now Valdo. Valdo, yeah. Yeah, man. They're killing it. Still killing it. Has, has Aron uh, been putting the paint on since day one, or did that evolve into did he evolve into that? No, uh, yeah, it evolved. It evolved. Uh -huh. Definitely, he was a, a pretty face drummer in the back <laughs> uh, for, for a long time until he got older and started putting the makeup on. Yeah. <laughs> so about what time, what year what, did he start putting oh, the makeup man. on, man? Like I, late 90s, early, early 2000s? Or I what? would say about early 2000s. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't speak to it for sure, but it sounds about right. And they've been a consistent act since 91, right? I mean, oh, yeah. not, have they ever broken up and gotten back together and stuff uh, like so that? There, there, there's, there's been a lot of different uh, different transitions and whatnot, but uh, but... I don't still definitely the, the, the founding member. Yeah, one of the foundations. It's always been a three piece. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you got to check them out, Pantheon, and uh, be sure to go to their social media pages and like their fan pages and, and follow up on them. And uh, they'll be releasing some videos as well. They've also got some video footage. They actually recorded the album with some some big wig up there in Houston, right? Or something yeah, like that? Yeah, Lake yeah, Jackson? Yeah. Uh, Will Evans. Yeah, Will Evans. Will Evans, a uh, uh, staple in the Austin scene, doing his own thing now in Lake Jackson. Great guy. Hilarious guy. Yeah. Uh, really good at what he does. And uh, he's been working with Pantheon very closely, I would say, maybe the last three to four years. Uh, he's definitely the go-to guy now for Pantheon. Yeah. Brownsville, Texas, very own Pantheon. And speaking of Brownsville and Pantheon, they're going to be part of Hernandez uh, Brownsville Music Festival that was created by this guy right here, Eric. It's going to be happening August 11th, 2018 in downtown Brownsville. It'll be from 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. Lots of great bands, food vendors, beer garden, uh, kids under 12 going for free so they can enjoy the music it's going to be a family event and it's at the historic downtown brownsville 1237 east adams brownsville texas in case you got to google it you know to get there but it's going to be awesome it's going to be a lot of fun a lot of great bands man who you got coming up on that all right so we got definitely we have pantheon on the bill mm -hmm. uh something that i'm very 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 proud of and very happy to be able to uh to bring to the people of brownsville is a tribute to jimmy gonzalez so uh before we heard the unfortunate news of uh, jimmy's passing he had agreed to do the show and really wanted to help us with uh, with our venture of making it a really diverse uh, a really diverse event with all sorts of different things, right? Mm -hmm. All sorts of different bands. We're going to have death metal. We're going to have indie rock. We're going to have a little bit of uh, hip hop. We're going to have everything. We wanted to do with the Hano Act uh, to bring things back to our roots and to bring things, uh, what better person, right, than, than Jimmy to have done uh, a, a, a show in downtown Brownsville, his hometown, uh, with, with the family. Unfortunately, we, we, we all know, uh, unfortunately, he passed away. Uh, it was a big a, a big hit for everybody in Brownsville, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Coming from Brownsville, born and raised, I know that that he he's a big deal to everybody. Uh, I've known Jimmy for a long time. Well, I knew him for a long time. I met him in the 80s uh, when I was working at a club in uh, Harnagen called Studio 4. I was a DJ, and uh, Sunday nights they'd have the Hano night. And I'd show up because it was my night off. My friend Mando Saroman was a disc jockey, and he always had the Hano bands, and Mando would DJ between the bands. And uh, I remember seeing Joe and Jimmy and the early, early members of Moz, you know, go through there in the 80s before – the uh, big time national record labels came in and got involved and started picking up all these uh, bands. So, you know, Maz and Selena and Emilio, those were like, and La Mafia, those were like the top, top bands in the 90s. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, they were spearheading the national, uh, you know, movement for the music, for Tejano music. And, um, you know, and, and Jimmy was always one of those guys that, you know, you could always go up to and hang out with yeah, and talk. And, and he loved the Dallas Cowboys. He loved yeah. wrestling. Yeah, so yeah, 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 so yeah, we got yeah, it yeah. on all the time, yeah, man. Me too. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the type of things that we all love. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. we hit it off great also. And um, 
And, and what really, really impressed me was that he really wanted to do the events. And he knew that it wasn't necessarily what his crowd was used to. It wasn't necessarily used to uh, what he was used to. But he was willing to step out and take a chance when he didn't have to anymore at that point in his career. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, uh, his legacy was already was already built and, 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 and set. He didn't have to take a chance, but he wanted to do it because he understood the concept. And he wanted to, he wanted to help and support the family because uh, we, we, we both uh, we, we've known each other for a long time. You know, and well. it's interesting because... Jimmy really didn't play that often in Brownsville, bro. Yeah. I mean, he played everywhere else. McAllen, you know, Edinburgh, Far San Juan Alamo, uh, you know, Harlingen. Uh, and he played a lot upstate, man, all over the state of Texas. He was a hot commodity everywhere he went. Of course, all the music he was recording after Joe and him broke up, you know, after Joe left the band, he continued and he started singing. He started writing the music. And we- that's when a lot of people realized who really was yeah. Maz, you yeah. know what I yeah, mean? Exactly. Maz, you know, the, exactly. the sound of Maz was Jimmy. Yeah, he, you was, know, he was Joe, the mastermind. Yeah, Joe was basically just the vocals, you know, uh, as far as, you know, that's concerned, you know. But Jimmy was the mastermind yeah. of the Maz sound, you exactly. know. I was uh, in a studio one time at the Freddie Record, as a matter of fact, and he was sitting there. It was like probably like almost midnight, you know, and he was sitting on a couch with his head up, with his eyes closed, and they were doing some keyboard parts, you know, and the engineer was messing around and Jimmy was just like this, you know, he was like this, you know, and he'd be saying, okay, no, 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 take that one out. Okay, put that one in and then, okay, a little bit higher here. And other. So he's calling all the shots yeah. while he's trying to get some sleep uh, in the studio. And I just, I was just amazed. Floored, yeah, yeah, I was floored. floored, you know, because that guy, believe it or not, is, was a musical genius. He was. I mean, he heard things in songs that none, no normal human being yeah. does. And he was one yeah. of us, and he was so down to earth. Yeah, yeah. Just, just awesome I remember it. Uh, you know, we used to have a lot of great time, a lot of great parties. Uh, as, far, as, as far as Joe's concerned, you know, when, when one time I was invited to a party there at the Border Apartments in Brownsville, it was Joe and Jimmy's birthday party. And this was probably like 88, man, 87, man. And I went, and I walked in there, and... You know, we right away went and sat down with Jimmy. You know, we went to hang out at his table, and he's there sitting eating his chato beans or whatever, you know. And then Joe shows up, and he's hanging out. And, you know, I personally was a big heavy metal sing, you know, singer yeah, yeah, yeah. fan, of a fan of heavy metal, and, and said, you know, heavy metal singers are the best. And you know what I mean? The, you know, I had that mentality back then. <laughs> so uh, there's some mariachis, right? And then Joe just starts singing with the mariachis, and I'm like, oh. What? <laughs> I was I was floored also, you know, because I realized Joe's voice that night, you know, seeing him sing their a cappella with um with the mariachis. And at that moment I said, Man, Jimmy and Joe together yeah, it's a whole different was story, yeah. monstrous. You know, that's what I mean, it was it was really incredible. It's really sad to find out that he passed away, man, uh, you know, and uh and, and I always thought about his kids, you know, because his kids, you know, Jimmy carried his kids along with him everywhere. You know, they were part of his band, road crew, management. I mean, they kind of pretty much just took care of their dad, you know. And uh, I haven't gotten to speak with any of them, man, with uh, with Mike or, or Junebug. Uh, have you spoken with him, man? Yeah, yeah. So uh, so Mike's definitely definitely helping us with the show. Uh, he, he definitely wanted to, to keep the legacy alive, uh, keep keep Jimmy relevant and, and, and keep his music alive for, for other generations to enjoy. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a, a tribute to Jimmy, um, th- again, in downtown Brownsville. And with, it'll be with, Jimmy's kids on, uh, performing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be Mike on drums and uh, his backing band. Uh, okay. Yeah, sir. And uh, do they have a singer that's going to sing? Or? Uh, yeah, I believe um, Danny Ortiz is, is the one doing it. Okay. He, he, he's, uh, he's been around. He, he used to tour with them and whatnot. So uh-huh. definitely has a great voice. Definitely, yeah. definitely could uh, do justice. To, to the music and legacy of Jimmy. Well, it's definitely going to make that event a, a, a very special. The Hernandez Bronzeville Music Festival, 3 p.m. to 12 a.m., August 11th, on a Saturday. Uh, where can we get tickets for that show, man? Uh, so downtown at the Kraken Lounge in uh, downtown Brownsville and also at Double Trouble. So it's a, a new bar next door. Um, only been open for about three to four months. Uh, good guys. Um, young guys running mm-hmm. their own business, doing yeah. the new entrepreneurship, um, doing things in downtown Brownsville and, and trying to trying to change the image of downtown Brownsville mm-hmm. is something that is very dear to my heart personally and very dear to uh, to my friend Danny who, who runs Kraken and my friend Rodrigo who runs uh, Double Trouble. So we've come together and uh, and try to put this together and make it bigger every single year. 
um, and, and, and change the image of downtown Brownsville because a lot of people don't have a very good image of it. So Is there anywhere online where they can get some tickets? Uh, nah, not, not now. Uh, not no. now. Working on it. Building okay. on it. Building right. on that. Uh, so we're three weeks away. So at this point, it'll be a lot of a walk of business, of course, mm -hmm. uh, at the door. Yeah. So $20 at the door, $15 if you're able to get them uh, before that uh, by coming downtown again and supporting downtown and uh, getting your wristbands while you're there. Uh, another band that, that I'm very, very uh, proud to have this year is Dead Horse. Yeah. Who uh, is definitely legendary. Legendary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they'll be wrapping up the career this year. Uh, by doing the Hernandez Bronze Music Fest and then doing one final show in their hometown of Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. for the very last time ever. Yeah. So um, they've had a pretty good uh, friendship with uh, with Panteon, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Works in Panteon yes. and and Confused, Confused who's also, also on the, on the, on the bill. On the bill. Yeah. Uh, Aldo Barrio. Those three. Yes, those three sir. groups together have been oh, uh, yeah. have been friends for a wide a while, yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're definitely excited to have uh, Dead Horse again wrapping up their legendary career. Um, they have a big following, man. So I, I hope a lot of people come out to to come hang out and and, and spend some time with them. For you, probably the last time in the valley ever. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I mean, uh, not only are you getting some, uh, you know, legendary bands, you're also getting some up and coming bands, and uh, yeah, the, the support, idea. the support uh, here locally recently, you know, with uh, you know, for the local music community has been overwhelming, man. I mean, yeah, a lot of people have there, been going man. to the shows, man. We've been doing a lot of local shows here. And I saw, people I saw the footage up. from y'all's last show. Uh, yeah, with Sons Calinette. of Texas. Well, we played at uh, in Wesleco with Sons of yeah, Texas yeah, yeah, and Over at Enemy and Addiction. And uh, another band was also uh, performing there as well. Um, that uh, is just a, an amazing act, man. But uh, the, the crowd showed up early. It was just so much fun. And it was a lot of great support. So I'm sure Brownsville is going to be, man, awesome. August I'm doing 11th. everything I can to make sure everybody knows about it. That's my job, to make sure everybody knows about it. And if they, they show up, they'll show up. But I know that there is there's a support. There's a support system. We have a lot of great things going. Come and support all the great, great artists that are emanating not only from Brownsville, but all of South Texas. Um, it, it really means a lot to us to make sure that this is a new, new, uh, a new fest that we could all be proud of. My end goal is to make this bigger and bigger every year. I have a 10-year goal. Mm -hmm. I want to take over more than just Market Square. I want to take over... A bigger part of downtown Brownsville, get bigger acts. My ten year goal, I always, I always say, I want a rancid or a social distortion mm -hmm. to headline my yeah. year ten Brownsville Music Fest or Misfits or something wild, yeah, something wild like, like that. that. <laughs> I mean, I got, I, I, I want this to be our warp tour. Our fun, 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 fun fest. Yeah. Our, uh, and it's something else other than Tejano, Norteño. Exactly. And country, you know, hey, but it, there's no reason why we can't it up, all co-mingle. Yeah. There's no reason why we can't all do our thing and uh, and take our piece of our sector, you know, the punk rock metal community um, and, and the Tejano acts, too. I mean, we want to get everybody involved. We, we want to just make it a brand new thing for people of Brownsville to sink their teeth into. Go to Facebook, the Hernandez Brownsville Music Festival. Uh, BMF and then uh, like the page or hit going or hit interested because every time you hit going or interested other people all your friends see that you're going and you're interested uh, on the event so the event gets some traction and you all help out a lot in getting the word out uh, that's about really this important. event yeah, man. so really, Hernandez really uh, Brownsville Music Festival happening August 11, 2018 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. tickets at the Kraken Lounge and Double Trouble uh, you can get your tickets there pre-sale or 15 bucks and it'll be 20 bucks at the door so get your uh, pre-sale tickets and to support this great event and it's brought to you by this guy man he's uh just, and my brothers i can't yeah. i can't leave him out <laughs> we're on on too guys thank you all for all your help thank you rock for hey, your no support problem, i man. appreciate Hell it yeah. man um see you all out there we'll be out there come say hi